So I welcome you all to another session. Uh, in today's video, we'll be picking up from where we left off last time. Um, I was um, reacting to the clips Dr. Karen A.C. Hasford sent to me. Uh, she is a physician in Ghana, West Africa. Uh, my curiosity was to find out what life would have been if I did not immigrate into the United States, you know, the steps that I had to take to earn my medical degree in Ghana. Well, in our previous video, if you've not seen it, please check the link above. In today's video, we'll be continuing from where we left off. But if you're new here, my name is Dr. Frederick Aqua. I'm a second year internal medicine resident in New Jersey, and I hope you enjoy this video. Let's go. This information is from uh, Zip Recruiter. Uh, just I did search how much uh, we make in residency, uh, and it's being uh, um, split up by the states. So as you can see, the highest paid um, resident on an average uh, is in the state of Massachusetts, um, then Hawaii, Connecticut, and we keep going. Uh, so as you can see, in New Jersey, we don't get paid that much. Um, New Jersey's right here, and uh, we're doing about 50,000 50, uh, 50, a year on an average. Um, but then sometimes it depends on the hospital. You know, there are some hospitals that compensate their residents very well. Um, so sometimes residents get more than the average that is seen on um, uh, Zip Recruiter. So, uh, so these are the uh, states in America, and this is how much um, residents do make. As you can see, Florida, a uh, beautiful state, you know, but um, per zip recruiter, they are the least paid um, uh, state when it comes to uh, residents. Me. <laughs> okay, um, sorry in Ghana for a medical doctor is really, really not much as compared to you guys outside, honestly. Um, you get a range of about $600 to about $2,000, I, if you're talking about salary from government. Wow, how, 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 how can you, you know, live on this money if you have like a family well, I guess maybe being in America, my my thinking has changed on certain things. But uh, well, people are still doing it as doctors in 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 Ghana. So let me just shut up and let's go back to the red hot video. Because people do other things. People have their private kin, uh, clinics. They have their um, locum. We call something locum. So you can work for other people whilst you're working for the government. Sort of, yeah. So people do that, do gigs here and there to get extra funds. But really, the basic salary is about six hundred to two thousand dollars. Well, when it comes to locums in America, I think you get a privilege to do that when you become an attendant. I've not heard of residents doing locums while in training. I think you need to be fully licensed before you can do the uh, locums. Not much. So if you're doing it for the money, uh, I'm really sorry. Of course, money is important, but you won't get that motivation here in Ghana. <laughs> if that's your motivation for the work, I think you will really not get that. Well, I agree. I agree with Dr. Hasford. Uh, if your motivation to come into medicine is to make a lot of money, then I think you're in the wrong field. Um, if you love money, then, you know, go, go on Wall Street, you know, or just be a finance person and maybe you might make more money than uh, becoming uh, a doctor. Uh, it takes a lot uh, to earn that degree and it's more about a good name. Uh, there is a principle that I guess I have to unleash now that a good name is better than riches. Don't chase up to money. Become a person of value and money will follow you. So it has to do with the access to healthcare and also about equity problems. So 
especially amongst the rural and urban regions you see there you know that the urban regions have a lot of um, resources a lot of specialists health personnel all like the whole urban system is choked with a lot of these things and when you go to the rural regions you don't have so much you have a few resources few equipment few um, medical personnel you hardly ever get doctors at the rural regions like you had me there are very few over there a lot of the time and this is because of how it's easy to get jobs in the region as com in the urban areas as compared to the rural areas so people are really interested in their local okay <laughs> get doing gigs here and there and you hardly get that in the rural areas so when people go to the rural areas doctors when they go to the rural areas they are in a hurry to leave and come back to the urban areas where there are more opportunities for them to reach out and get more gigs to do in the rural areas you hardly get gigs to do so you are stuck with the main job okay so i think that's one of the problems that we have and because of well it's it's interesting to know that uh, in ghana the rural areas um, are not well compensated i think that's different in the united states um, people that work in rural areas are very well compensated if you want to live in the city you don't make that much compared to if you live in rural areas so it's shift the people to the urban areas to receive quality health care and most rural people don't want to do that it's really hard to get rural people to come to the hospital to begin with and i think that's also an education problem so you can say some of the disparities has to do with education in rural areas more people in the urban areas are likely to go to a health facility if um they have issues than those in the rural areas who resort to other forms of um, health care. So they hardly ever go to the hospitals. We also have to do with the low income and high income disparity. So people with low incomes hardly ever report to the hospitals when they are sick because, well, <laughs> they don't have money. You get it. The excuse is always, I don't have money. To go to the hospital uh, there are people that come to our hospitals um, that don't have insurance and uh, when they get here we ask them when was the last time you saw a doctor they're like oh seven years ten years and then we find this uh, uh, disease process that could have been prevented you know so i don't think it's only in ghana i think it's also here in the united states um, where people just hold on rather than seeking medical help they'll just wait because they don't want the, the bills, you know, to pile up, you know, so let's continue. It gets to the advanced stage before you see them here, okay, and they wouldn't, there's some sort of delay in rural regions, especially when it comes to that sometimes, because even making a, a correct diagnosis of that is a bit some way they'd go to the herbalist the herbalist would do all sorts of concoctions and all because they don't have money they wouldn't come directly to a health facility to be seen but they go to the herbalist they do all sorts of concoctions drink all sorts of things damage their livers and their kidneys and have these um, tumors that are growing that are spreading by the time they get here it's well advanced and all you can do is palliative care You'd be surprised to know that those with low incomes rather do not register for health um, insurance in the country. Um, the National Health Insurance Scheme is renewed yearly and you see that people would register for the National Health and not renew it. And they are rather the ones with the low incomes. So they rather spend more. Concoction make sure of certain things uh, we also do see that uh, people coming in when you're doing um, they are mad wreck meaning asking the patient what kind of medications you're on uh, our attendants always encourage us to ask if you're taking anything over the counter you know if you're taking any vitamins from somewhere you know because sometimes that can lead us to what could be the right diagnosis in a patient 
it's not always they come with maybe a fever and it's from an, uh, from an infection. You know, sometimes the reaction to certain things that are not supposed to be there. I'll take this opportunity to um, advise anyone watching me today. Medicine is going towards evidence-based. If you're taking something, if you're drinking something, if you're eating something because somebody advertised that to you to be the cure of something, please just do a little research. Just find out, you know, see if that thing you're about to drink or eat or try, if it will actually work. We need to use evidence-based medicine in whatever that we do. If you just do it because it worked for that guy next door, it may not work for you. You know, we may look the same, but our system may be different in handling certain things. Your hormones may affect one or two things and you may react to something differently than how someone else will. So please do your best and speak with your doctor before starting something over the counter, you know, or do your own research before trying things that have not been prescribed by a doctor. It will save you millions. So, and of course, that would deter them from coming to the hospital ever again. And some other people think that they don't, well, they don't get sick. So they don't bother to um, renew it. You see the whole point? If you don't have it, apply for it. I think in the United States in November, that's when the platform opens for you to apply for uh, health insurance. You know, so... It's there, you know, if you don't have it, just apply. If you qualify, you get free health insurance and you just utilize it to your benefit. We want everyone to stay healthy, all right? That's our job, to educate you on your health and well-being. And we are doing that one day at a time. Kind of educate, focus more on the rural region because a lot of the cases we get in the urban region are referrals from the rural region. So, if we can um, decentralize, if we can get more equipment into the rural regions to to diagnose correctly, if we can get more educationists in the rural regions to um, educate people that no matter your income, no matter whatever it is, you have to come to the healthcare centers to be seen, whatever sickness it is. I think we can go a long way. There are so many problems, like especially in the rural regions and especially in our local setting. You know how we like herb herbal medicine. I am not against herbal medicine if we are doing the right thing. But you know how in Ghana especially they mix concoctions for some people and some people don't know what they are doing okay and then they just give it like it helped with this person so maybe it will help with yours and then they take it and they probably have some sort of other disease that cannot be cured with these herbal concoctions and they'll be on it for years and the disease worsens and progresses they report to the hospital nothing can be done they refer them to the urban regions to the bigger hospitals it's a problem so i think we should just try to decentralize and move more specialists to the rural region build more hospitals in the rural region um policies that can help them to access health care easily without having to pay too much so access to health care it's important education education patient education you know someone may come to the hospital and we see them but if we do not educate them well they come back again and that goes against the hospital you know someone with congestive heart failure i need to make sure i educate them to reduce the amount of salt they take in reduce the amount of water you know try to be compliant with their medications you know, if they don't do that, their heart failure may worsen, they may decompensate, and then they end up in the hospital, and that does not look good on me as your doctor. So I think education is important. And uh, people in the diaspora, um, doctors watching me, do your best to educate your patient. I know we are limited by time sometimes, but patient education goes a long way. Logistic allocation is also important. I think uh, the uh, incentives, 
you know, like I, I, what I said before in the United States, in the rural areas, doctors do make more. Let's hear what she has to say on her final word. Yes, you can. You can be anything you want to be because Christ Jesus lives in you. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. And you can do all things by prayer. You can do all things by determination, by seeking God about certain things. I mean, I had given up on my dream to be a medical doctor. After my undergraduate studies, I was still, I mean, I was still trying to see if I can do that elsewhere in another country, see how to go about it. But I prayed, I prayed, I prayed about the will of God. I prayed for God to direct me, to provide if I have to go. And he did provide to my family. Yeah, so I did. And throughout, the journey is not easy, but I think that you still have to be positive. You have to pray a lot, study your word a lot, um, be kind and nice to people, be generous, be willing to learn, be open to people, um, try to be in people's shoes sometimes and see how best you can help people, okay? And try to have a little balance as you do this, okay? Try to take care of yourself, your health, yourself, and um, spend time with family, spend time with friends, have a good time, and be disciplined, consistent, steady. You can do it. That's all I can say. Thank you so much, Frederick, for having me on your channel. It was such an honor to be here. Any question you have will be answered in the comment section. All right, so there you have it. Uh, faith has played an important role in my journey through medicine. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm a strong believer. And exactly what Dr. Hasford has uh, said, you know, sometimes it seems like the path that you're taking to reach that endpoint is not clear enough. Uh, it may seem a bit foggy, but with time, with faith, things will appear clearer, and you will see that vision come to light. I believe that your time had not been wasted today, and you've enjoyed this video. Now, I know what life would have been if I was still in Ghana trying to pursue that medical degree. For now, I'm happy that you joined me be sure to subscribe and like Dr. Haswell said, if you have any questions on medical education in Ghana or you're in the United States, please leave it in the comment section and she'll respond based on questions relating to Ghana and I'll respond based on questions relating to the United States or approved medical schools in the Caribbean. I'll see you in my next video. Stay positive. Shalom.